Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here, bringing a video here today, bringing guys a Photoshop tutorial on create your very own cool poster, wallpaper, advertisement, uh, player card video here today. So as you can see my example right here, we have Messi, it's a pretty fun little concept revolving around, of course, creating your own sort of like, like I said, poster or wallpaper kind of um, vibe to it. I, I The reason why this came up, by the way, is I, uh, a student, I, or no, not a student, but a teacher emailed me like three or four weeks ago and said, hey, I think one of your students stole one of your designs, like leaked my video. And I was like, bruh. I'm gonna do another video. So, with that being said, today's video is actually sponsored by Wix, by the way. So, if you guys don't know what Wix is, it's a free website builder. It's purchased the site, uh, I guess, how I host my site. Excuse me. I've had it for like, I've been like, I've been like pretty valid with them for like a four, four years now, I think. Um, Super clean, super professional. I love it so very much. You guys can actually do this like little pro builder feature where you guys build your website with the actual site itself and giving you guys really cool templates and really cool ways to, I guess, compose the site. Uh, with that being said, the link should be in the description. I'm love if you guys want to check it out. I'm going to talk more about it at the end of the video. But before that, we have to, of course, do this little sort of por uh, portion of the video, which is the actual design. So let's go and get this thing going. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a quick little second. Um, really quickly as well, the assets right here are these right here. So we have like the, I guess you can see a little bit, a quick before and after, right? of the messy shot that we have and kind of how we made it look really really cool and epic black and white while also keeping the player colors pretty simple way of doing that kind of stuff um no penciling really involved by the way so you know for those who don't know how to you're welcome um stripes we have the scb logo blue picture and the red picture um they're not even that crazy high quality either i would probably go with more high quality pictures but for the example that i had here today i just went with these pictures and it's perfectly fine so with that being said let's go get this thing going and i'll tell you guys in a second all right, guys. So for most cases, I think the reason why I'm gonna be doing this is either posting on like Instagram, Twitter, or something like that. So the document says I'm actually using today's video is file new. Um, pretty much what I end up doing is usually using 1920 by 1080, right? So with like Instagram and stuff like that, you can actually just flip these numbers and put 1080 up here and 1920 up top. That's perfectly fine. You get this really cool sort of like uh, like story dimension for uh, Instagram and stuff. So if you guys want to press create, what I personally like to do is like I like to keep it in this document sort of desktop sort of format. Um, of course, you want to do like more a desktop wallpaper, you would keep it at this format. But I like to press C sometimes on my keyboard, which is the crop tool, and hold Alt and then just drag it in and kind of figure out like how thin, how thick I want it to be. So I don't usually always go with 1080 by 1920 as like the, the longer version of like the Instagram story kind of format. But something, you know, since I want to make it a little more thick, I want to put two players in, I want to put more of like a, a really cool, like wider picture where you can see all of his arms in the frame. Like right now, you can't see all the arms in my frame. But if I had like a, you know, uh, how do you say, a, a wider frame, it would, you know, you'll be able to see the arms. Arms, you know what I mean? So that being said, that's like the whole little document size there. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get out of full screen mode. And we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Bring back in here. And uh, okay, let's go ahead and get this thing going. So I think the first thing I wanna do really quickly is just really quickly set up the background. So I'm gonna be using my assets. I'm gonna be kind of taking them out of the folder and then making duplicates of them to kind of you know pretend that I kind of got it from Google and whatnot. <laughs> so the blue picture here is in my background picture. So I'm gonna throw the blue picture in there, turn that on. This is the blue background photo. Okay, and then with the blue background front, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my adjustments here and then go to gradient map and I'm gonna throw on my blue gradient, which I believe is this one right here. Neither of these are it, but I think it's probably because I have a reverse on. Yeah, okay, so here's my blue gradient here. So if you guys wanna quickly get the blue gradient that I personally have, uh, hex code 1339E, 133960, sorry, and then uh, 020409, is like a little, little sort of hex codes. You guys gonna put those in that little box. So you guys get the same colors that I have. And this little midpoint here, I have it more towards the left hand side. Cause right here you can see it's a little, it's kind of like highlight wash, which means the photo itself kind of has a lot of more like it's highlight elements to it, right? So if you take this little midpoint here, the darker side, and you wanna favor the darker side, you wanna move it away from the darker side, you can take this midpoint and just move it towards the left hand side to get less uh, crazy, like, you know, kind of washed out highlights. So I'm gonna press okay now. And here's my blue background. I'll throw in my picture of Messi, and this is how we're gonna go ahead and set this thing up. So the first thing I first like to do is you guys take your picture, your PNG and whatnot. I actually didn't even pencil this out, by the way. I just typed in Messi uh, PNG period. That's all. I think that's all I did. Like Messi PNG, right? And uh, you get this really cool, like there's like a whole bunch of folders on them. So, you know, if you guys wanna use Messi, you guys can do so. I think as well for me, I'm gonna put the assets in the description down below as well immediately. So you guys can use the same assets I have to kind of test roll it. Um, okay, so what I like to do is make sure you guys right click and convert it to a smart object. I believe doing this will help you guys out so very much because when you guys go to filter, camera filter raw, 
and it's going to press OK immediately for a second. You guys will see that your camera filter roll is going to stay able to be get kind of like fixed. If you guys were not to have a uh, smart object and use like a regular old layer without a smart object, of course, you guys will not be able to see this. You guys got to go back and then kind of fix it again. Guess what you did last time if you did it really well last time. You don't want to do that. Just want to make sure a smart object, when you put on camera filter raw, you'll be able to double click on it again and open it right back up. So as well as this little Y down here, this first little thing you probably will, will see is if you click on it, it switches between the before and after. And I personally like to have this up to kind of see if you're going too far over to the like the too much highlights, too many shadows, too dark, too light kind of thing. Okay. I'm going to zoom in really quick. <clears throat> so the first things I'd like to do is put some clarity. So clarity is like almost number one, in my opinion, clarity kind of like, I guess you would say kind of contracts these pixels and makes them a little more darker. It also kind of sharpens in a way. Um, <clears throat> I love the way it looks personally. It's used a lot in the esports scene as well. So of course I'm doing like a player, I'm doing soccer, you guys can do basketball, bit football, like whatever the heck you guys want to do, baseball, you know? So it's just like not, this is just, I wanted to do soccer because I haven't done soccer in a while, or, or uh, football, got you, got you, got you, okay? So, all right, so clarity up here. We're gonna think, uh, I think I'm gonna take our blacks, throw them a little bit further down, like to negative 10. I think no matter what, it's always going to be something different you're always gonna find you're always gonna have a different player a different shot so i would think always start off with clarity put it like 45 or so if it's too much lower down or so um message your blacks take your highlights say you hey i want to put a little more highlight in here right you want to take your shadows a little more highlight here as well and i'm just gonna say okay i'm gonna scroll down for a second as well i'm gonna take my saturation uh not my saturation so i'm not gonna change my, i'm not gonna change my saturation here i think this is pretty good for now I also did put texture up a lot as well for the shirts. I think like seven or so is a pretty good number. So seven texture, around 40 or so clarity. DHA is not gonna really mess with it. Mess with all my blacks and my whites just so I can get my uh, shirt or the jersey itself to look really, really nice and good. You wanna go ahead and press okay. All right, my bad, that's thought was my door. So you wanna go ahead and press okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do now is go to my adjustments. I'm gonna go to my human saturation. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take my human saturation adjustment. I'm gonna right click, clip and mask it. So what this ends up doing is if you guys were to quickly mess around your hues, you see how it messes around the entire sort of like canvas. If you guys were to right click, clip and mask, which is right here. It'll only work on the player itself, and that's what we wanna have do. So I'm gonna take my hue, put this back on zero. I'm gonna take my saturation, throw this all the way down to negative 100. It's gonna make it, of course, black and white. So, now that I have this nice little black and white hue, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my layer style to be active to like a all painted white to an all painted black. But once I click on this right here, you'll see your colors all automatically change to black and white for your foreground and your background. If you press Alt Backspace, it'll then erase it because it's applying the black to the white. And then I'll put if you, of course, if you know if you put a black brush right over a white brush, it'll of course erase it. If you put a white brush over a black background brush, it'll start putting it back in. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be, be doing. Excuse me. I'm gonna take my white brush here. We're gonna say a pretty good hardness so I can make sure I get some pretty good non-feathered uh, edges. I'm gonna take my hair and all that cool stuff and just go over it with a nice little brush. So this kind of eliminates any like pen tooling that's necessary. So you just kind of take these areas right here. I'm gonna be a little loose. I know I just messed up right here. But if you guys press X on your keyboard, by the way, so really quick, if I click on it, if I press X, it switches the, uh, it switches automatically from the foreground and your background colors. And since when you guys are clicked uh, on the actual mask here, uh, holding X or pressing X really quickly between each no, uh, you know, each between, excuse me, it kind of, of course, switches the actual colors and you guys will be able to kind of quickly, if you guys mess up, like if I, oops, I go over the jersey, I press X or you can press control Z, but if I press X and kind of go over it again, that'll erase it, press X again to fill stuff back in. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. I love to do that. I didn't actually do that since, since like, not too long ago, actually. I was like, holy crap, X switches the colors. Um, do this. I'll say his knee over here, right? Dude, this dude's freaking legs or what the heck, bro? Imagine getting kicked. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this as well. Don't leave any sort of skin portions, I guess, non-black and white, unless you kind of want it to be a color, but I think for now, I think keeping all of his, his limbs that are showable as well as his cleats be black and white as well. So just only because it'll keep the jersey and the actual, of course, team colors is what stays in uh, focus. Like, you know, what stays the focal point, which is what the colors of those teams. So I think this is all pretty good. Oops, X, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think that's pretty good. And we've got, so, 
perfect. I like this so far. So, of course, we have the black and white little face, hands, uh, legs, and his, of course, feet as well. It looks really good. So, I'm going to go ahead and right click, or excuse me, control click on the hue, right? And then also control click on this. One reason why I'm holding control is it selects both the layers. I can press control G to group them. I'll call this backup. Press control J to duplicate them. And I'm going to right click on this backup copy and do convert to smart object, which will combine the gradient and the picture together and leaves us for a nice little picture of just the gradient and the picture itself. And we can just jump right back into uh, camera filter raw really quick. <laughs> and I like to just add a little bit more clarity. So I didn't add, I add about 40 or so. Maybe if you want to go back and add a little bit less, by the way, if you wanted to go back, you can click on the backup itself on the smart object and switch it like so. And then when you guys save it, you press control S to save in this document and you were to exit out, it'll change it in the actual real document as well. So the smart objects are more than just, you know, keeping things together. It kind of, of course, keeps them separate, but also together in the same way, which is kind of like what you want to do when you guys want to, if you guys mess up, you guys can fix things really, really easily. So on this backup copy, like I just did, right, I'm going to put my clarity up just a little more for the black and white. And then you can sort of see more now if you got to put your highlights up, you got to put your shadows down kind of thing like highlights. If you want to make, you know, this is if it was if it if yours was like this, where it was super, super flush and super like too much white that's going on. You take your highlights and you just drop it down, right? Your shadows as well. You can bring these up, right? Shadows here. Now, let's also say really quickly for the people who don't know how to use camera filter raw. Let's say you love how he looks like how dark he his facial uh, facial features are, but you don't want his hair to be as dark. You guys just literally take the adjustment brush. Okay. If you hold, I believe it's, what is it? Control or is it right clicking? Yeah. So if you guys right click and move left and right, you can lower the, 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 I guess the, the size of your brush and you want to go ahead and just click hover around, right? So this little red piece here is kind of indicating what is going on. So if I put my exposure up all the way, you'll see it, it was filling something in. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and take my shadows and say, Hey, I want my hair to be pretty up there so it doesn't mess with anything else but the hair and i love how that looks and i'll put some clarity up as well for it right you can make it look pretty sick so without it of course you'll have it i don't know how to turn it off uh where's the off button i know there's an off button where would it be overlay no i don't think it's overlay i forgot how to turn it off and on but you guys know it you guys get the point right it just kind of only clicks and messes with the hair itself or where you of course drag your mouse and stuff so press ok now we got our hair looking pretty cool, the face is looking pretty dope, we got some black and white shoes, and the only thing that's in color is the actual jersey and the team itself, and it looks pretty freaking sick. So, the rest of this actual portion of this video is more or less kind of me kind of messing around with more of the design features. So, at this point, this is where you guys can really just, of course, move your own direction. But for me, what I ended up doing was just using these stripes here, right? So I'm going to put these stripes in here. Turn these on for a second, throw this below. So with these stripes here, I actually just use the pen tool. I said I'm not gonna use the pen tool in today's video, but I also said I'm gonna put the asks in the video description so you guys don't really need a pen tool. But if you guys wanna do some really cool little stripe sort of feature, you guys just literally, I just pen tool like this. And kind of what I ended up doing was when I kind of finished this first one here, I press Control and Alt. I took, I clicked on this point right here and just dragged it out, it makes a duplicate. And then with that being selected now, you can press Control T on your keyboard, hold Alt, and shift click on the top right and then make it bigger right that's what i ended up doing just kind of make these little stripes so if you guys want to know how i do that that's how i did it but we're just using the stripes here with these stripes now i'm gonna take this red picture uh i'm gonna clip mask this red picture onto the stripes and this makes it really easy for me to say hey i want to move my picture a little bit more so i can get the messy shot you can see his face a little bit or his, the back of his head a little bit and the actual uh jersey in the behind right because i think having like a frontal view of the jersey and a back view of the jersey that gets a number and stuff like that it's a pretty cool concept right so i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go to my adjustments tab gradient map right click clip masses gradient map to this picture again you guys know why from before and then you guys gonna do your gradient map here click on this to bring up the colors and i believe the red that i used was this one but reversed right uh, I mean, this is pretty good. It might be a little bit too harsh. I don't know. I don't think so. So the red that I have here, oops, is hex code C2, uh, C32929. And the black that I have with the darker shade is just pure black. 0000, zero, zero, zero all the way through. Um, press OK. Press OK again. Now that I have this here, I can go ahead and just what I like to personally do is take the red picture, the stripe picture, and the background picture and of course the gradient as well so the entire background besides him right here so this right here I, you could have grouped everything honestly so everything below the actual picture of Messi or the picture of your player you can group together because that was all just working with the background right so you can just call this background for a second then with this i want to make a copy of it so control j on the keyboard to go ahead and of course 
uh, duplicate it really quickly. And then with this copy here, I'm going to convert it to a uh, smart object. And you guys probably guessed it. We are going to be going into camera filter raw. So with this here, I'm going to go ahead and say to my clarity, I want you to be down here. I want my dehaze to be a little bit up. I want my highlights to be kind of showing a little bit, right? My blacks kind of come out just a bit more. And then if you say, hey, your red is too intense, you take your saturation under your reds and you want to lower it down a little bit, you can do that. Um, and I'm also going to go to where it says presets. I'm going to go to where it says sharpen. It's probably not uh, open for you, but if you go to sharpen, you guys go to like medium or heavy. I'm going to say medium is pretty good for now and press OK. And you guys will get this better sort of like cleaner, crisper version of what you had before, right? It was, it was a little bit too like blurry, a little bit too non-aggressive. This one kind of like sticks out, kind of goes with the, uh, the player itself and looks pretty good. So I'm going to really quickly as well bring up this poster design that we did before and just see where we're at, I guess you would say. Um, all the, uh, by the way, when you guys make duplicates with uh, smart objects, they take significantly longer to, of course, uh, how do you say, duplicate. So keep that in mind. It's not your computer being slow. It's just a lot going on. So I guess the little last parts I have here are the text, the, the little smoke effect as well, and these little lights. So the smoke effect actually should be in the assets as well. I'll, put the, I'll also put that in the assets, but it's in my align pack here. So I'm going to go ahead and just shrink this down a little bit. I'll get, I'll give you guys this smoke texture if you guys want it personally. So it'll be in the little asset pack that I'll have in the description. So I'm going to kind of spin it around, mess around with it. I'm going to put some smoke like something like this. So you can put smoke, you can put dust. I didn't want to go like too mainstream how other people do their like little, uh, I guess, player posts where they have like dust and stuff going on. Um, I kind of just went more like the smoke. You know what I mean? I, but like the dust thing, it makes more sense. It's like soccer. You get kicked up dust and all that stuff or dirt, not dust. But yeah, you guys get the point, right? You take it. And you say, okay, kind of just made it kind of behind him, sort of like favoring the right hand side and coming around like an almost like an S curve. Um, I can then just really quickly, if I click on the first layer and then hold shift and click on the layer in between, it'll select all those layers in between or not layer in between, but last layer that I want to select and everything in between gets selected. So all three of those can be selected really quickly. You can press control E on your keyboard to merge them all together, right? And I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to go ahead and just go to my gradient overlay. Actually, I believe it made a style for this, right? I did. So for these little styles, you actually have uh, inner shadow, which happens to be just kind of it kind of like makes it a little more darker um, on the, of course, on the actual sides. The blend modes on multiply. The color is black. The opacity I put on 20% for all the people out there. Um, distance at one, zero, choke size and two size. Uh, I'm gonna go to inner shadow, uh, inner glow here, which gives that really cool smoke effect. It kind of like takes it from being a regular smoke effect to almost being a little more 3d-ish or a little more capped i guess you would say or I, I personally like the effect if you don't like it you can turn it off of course um opacity is at 98 percent. i could have put it at 100 but i put it on 98 uh choke is at blue uh, excuse, excuse me choke is one size is 24 and the color is blue the blend mode is normal and i believe you can also put on linear dodge as you guys can get more of a brighter concept and then lower the opacity down i'll probably do that for a second and it'll look pretty good too like 60 or so okay so the satin here is actually kind of like it also it's so satin itself kind of takes the object and almost like shrinks it down but also what happens is it get, kind of gets like polygonish um so for me i just ended up doing it just a little bit with a little bit of opacity so blend mode multiply black color six opacity one distance um size at five all that cool stuff right and then your angles at just 90. so i just lowered it very if you put it up for a second you'll see it, what it kind of did for this. I'm gonna just put it at five or six again. So it just adds a little more, I guess, depth to the actual concept itself. And last but not least is how I actually got the color, which is the blue. And I believe the same blue that I use for the gradient is the same blue that I use for this uh, gradient overlay on this layer here. So you can just press okay. Or if you guys wanna save gradients, if you guys don't know how to save gradients, you guys can go back to your uh, background gradient, click on the word new, and it'll make a new gradient for you guys. And you guys just go ahead and have it be a preset. Press okay, press okay again. And then I'm just gonna quickly type in the little names of this portion here. So, oops, this is already still active. So I'm gonna quickly get rid of that. I think it's Lionel, right? Take this, put it up here. Oh, it's not capital. I'm gonna go with Lionel and then the word messy. Okay. I'm gonna make the, the last name the bigger name because of course that's the name that's more uh, seen on the jerseys than anything else, right? As you can see in the back right here. It doesn't really show the word Lionel, uh, the name Lionel, excuse me. So I'm going to put this right there. I'm going to put the number 10, kind of like his number. You can put it on the bottom. You can put it on the top, like right here, put it on the bottom, right? Or I just like to put it right here, like almost like a little asterisk, like saying, hey, I'm number 10 kind of thing. And then I'll take the logo, which is under assets as well, FCB logo. 
take this and then activate it shrink it down a bit right put it right next to it i can put a little drop shadow on it as well if i wanted to um like a black little drop shadow right change the angle to like a little off angle here just a little bit of a drop shadow a little more opacity press ok and then i'll change the one to like uh like a yellow i'll change this to like a red right something like this Kind of get like the little colors of the of the 10 on the logo itself kind of make that kind of feel a little bit together i think that's pretty good and i'm also going to do is i'm gonna go behind the actual player shot make a new layer below it right and take my brush here nice simple black brush with zero hardness so size pretty good size and a zero hardness brush default brush and i'm gonna go ahead and just take my brush here also if you guys can't see your brush when you guys are uh uh of course painting and you guys see how you see my brush and the the size of it um, it's cap locks. Your cap locks is on, by the way. Okay, so just simply with a soft brush, kind of give myself this nice little black background right here. That way, the lay the like the letters can be shown a little bit better. Uh, it's not hard to see all that good stuff. So I'm gonna just take this stuff and you can put it like wherever you kind of want on this sort of like lower third part of the actual uh, poster design. So now what you can do is what I personally did for mine as well under the backup layer, which is the of course the player shot right now. Sorry, the backup layer anymore, right? I can go ahead and clip and mask a new layer to that layer, right? I can take a brush, another soft brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard. It brings up the eyedropper tool while, while the brush tool is active. And you guys click and drag around. You guys can get the same colors of any color you wanna see. So I'm gonna personally take the color of like the darker blue here. I'm gonna shrink my uh, brush a little bit. I'm gonna take this. I'm just gonna simply on the right hand side, just like kind of like kind of paint a little bit of that color on. Take your bumbo, put it on a uh, linear dodge add, of course, right? And if it's not too much, you can't see a, too much of a light, you can take your lightness and put it up a little bit more. You might have to throw your saturation up as well. But I'm gonna say, I think that's pretty good. I might go with a different color. Let's see what a different color looks like. A, more of a lighter blue, not a darker blue. Let's see what happens. Linear dodge add still. Yeah, here we go. Lighter blue looks a little bit better. So here's a lighter blue, not a darker blue. I'm going to take my erase a little bit, erase. So I'm going to have this sort of like nice little sort of light shade right behind him. It's going to look really, really nice. And uh, yeah, I think I, I do like how that looks a lot. And then I guess last but not least of the two last little things I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do is over this little, I guess, little glow layer over the shot, make a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and take my simple little marquee tool, which is pressing M on the keyboard and making like a nice sort of little rectangle. Okay. And with this rectangle, I'm going to take this blue same blue as before i guess that you painted the color as and then go over just like so over on one corner only okay so the top right corner i favored i didn't go like all the way in like this i kind of went on the outside and kind of painted through the outside of it because the marketable selection only allows you to paint inside of course when something is selected on that new layer then on this on this new layer you can change it from uh, blend more normal to linear dodge add and you can take your eraser now and over these edges here where it's kind of like too harsh of a of a of course an angle like right here and like right here it's too harsh of an angle i'm gonna erase these okay just like so make it a little less harsh you can even lower the opacity of course because it's a little bit too bright and then with this being that blue light that's coming from the back of him you guys can just go ahead and take this same exact blue light blue light duplicate it with Control j again which is uh duplication of course like uh like we said before this will be the red light and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control T on my keyboard. I'm going to flip it horizontally and then flip it vertically. Okay. Where, where'd it go? Oh, I'm fucking lost. Where'd it go? Help? There he is. Holy, for some reason, blanked out. Okay. So once I've done that, I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Just like so. We'll move this over here. And then we're going to double click over here. Go to color overlay. And then go ahead and just click on a red. And I'm going to see this is a pretty good red right linear dodge add is still active i want to load the patch just a little bit take my eraser erase those hard edges over him right here as well and i'm going to go ahead and say last but not little least click on the first layer in your canvas all the way down to the background which is be right right here for me press Control j on the keyboard to duplicate it all and then press Control e to merge it all and of course the last little thing we're going to end up doing is a good old convert to smart object color uh excuse me camera filter raw I'm gonna click over here, take this Y. I'm gonna say, hey, my highlights, I wanna bring them up. And my whites, I wanna bring them up. My shadows, I wanna like a little more darker, a little bit more clarity. 
You can take this over here if you want to put a little more saturation, not saturation, but sharpness you can, but I think it's not really necessary for me at the moment. If you want to mess around with your curves, you can. And if you wanted to, for some reason, make the reds even more like standout-ish, uh, you can do that by putting the saturation up. But Or if you want to change the blue hue, you can change the hue of the blue if you wanted to. But I'm not going to, but if you wanted to make it a little bit more... I wouldn't change the colors too much, but just if you wanted to tune it just a little bit, I would do so. Press OK. And then you got yourself a good old poster wallpaper design that looks super, super freaking sick. And you can put whatever the heck other designs you guys want to put. Like, you can put, like, for some reason, I want to do this so bad right now. Um, right, you can do this little sort of, like, remember this? We do this a lot. Like, a really big text. You lower the fill all the way down to zero. It lowers the opacity, per se, but it allows the layer styles to still be seen. So you can say messy, turn on the stroke. You take this, you make it white. And then you can put the messy text on like on the left or the right hand side. You make it look pretty cool. You can do whatever the heck you guys want. I just want to show you guys some little, little more tips. So there's more further design you can do with this. And there's more takeaways you can do. More additions of your style that you want to put in. And uh, with that being said, I think this portion of the video is pretty much done. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, right now we'll talk about Wix. So I'm just going to shoot over there really quickly. So like I said before guys, Wix is super professional, super user friendly, and super quick on making your own sites. Like once you guys sign up, you guys will get these very quick little questions that are based around what your website and what your business, or maybe it's like an online store, what it's all about. And with Wix ADI, it makes it super friendly for those who are not used to creating websites. Answer four quick little questions, it'll give you guys three different templates, and with those three different templates, you guys will design and make your own website with the template that they gave you guys. And with the design itself, it's super, super simple to switch out pictures, all that good stuff, as you guys will see in a second, as well as all the different types of design choices you have in each template. Template. And with Wix, you have your own database of images to choose from, but of course you can upload your own pictures like I personally did and uh, get a nice little portfolio piece going as well. So for me, I wanted to choose my design, kind of mess around with it a little bit more to get it more friendly to me, I guess more seamless and kind of kind of correct for the, the images that I personally put in there. Makes it very, very simple for you guys with a preview button. And of course, Wix as well has a really nice little simple seamless transition between mobile and desktop. Makes it super easy for you guys to understand and super quick and super just fun. And I hope you guys enjoy it. It's the top of the description. Check it out right now for sure. Alright guys, so I'll talk to you guys later. Seso HQ out. Don't forget to like in the video. You can see it down below as always. And uh, look, just comment down anything you want to see me personally do. And shout out to Wix once one more time. Appreciate you guys so very much. I'll see you guys later. Seso HQ out. Peace. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive And stay freaking productive guys. Later.